Okay, I'm um, doing a little setup on a jig here. Got the jig and the right hand jig in place, and I'm showing. Uh, I want to show how I load it. Uh, this is going to be um, a weave for Ken Price. Uh, I've got two of them to do, both the same, flathead catfish. And what I've done is I've put um, the layer of thread that I'm going to come to last during the weave. I'm putting it down first. I put, always put them down in reverse order so that the layer of thread that I'm going to use is always the first, first one on top. Um, first one I use will be the one on top. So what I've done is I've stuck tape, run the thread from the jig to the tape, and then after I've got the whole layer done, I take and make about a 10 or 20 turn wrap of thread just to hold it in place. I'll put a new piece of tape over it and then I'll start right at the edge of that pink thread because it is the center of the wrap and I will load one direction and then I'll load back the other direction. I have loaded the second layer which is white thread. It's all Madeira that I'm using on this one. Um, uh, second layer, you see that I had put a fresh piece of tape on here and then loaded it just like I did before starting from the center of the weave out and then I wrapped a small wrap of gold just to hold it in place. Um, the good thing about setting it up like this is you can watch and see how close those threads are staying to where they belong. So far I'm in good shape. Um, start on the next layer. I, again, the way I load my jigs, and people do it different, is um, I load the last layer that I'm going to come to during the weave, I lay it in first. So it's on the bottom then I end up laying the um, first thread I'm coming to will be on the top layer. So in some cases it might be in conflict but I usually load the fullest layer on top too. Alright. Getting ready to load uh, the third layer right now. I just want to take a second and show that uh, how I how I work from the center out. There's a gap at the 50 mark here. That's though that's not the center of this weave. Uh, that's what I'm using as my mark to to uh, gauge where to put the threads. You see that slit goes all the way down. What I have done is I have started the next layer right on that crack. It's about as accurate as I found a way to do it and it's worked so good uh, uh, recently that uh, I might actually have found my secret adding those little tie-offs which I kinda got the idea from Owen so uh, thanks Owen and uh, we'll see this a little more in a while alright now I'm on I just finished the fourth layer of thread and you'll notice that the these two colors should be lined up the brown and the green they're both supposed to be number 83 and up at the top about the same maybe three threads different what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pick and I'm going to put it right in this area and then spread the threads on both ends. In other words, push it down to the wrap below and spread it like this to see if I can get it over further. Now normally um, during a weave I can pull threads that are maybe three or th four threads away but um, I like to get it as close as I can before I start. So just one of the little tricks that I do getting ready. Now we're ready to put on the 
seventh and final um, layer of thread. It's a dark brown which will be the dark back color of the fish. It's on top so it's the first color I'm coming to. Okay, looks like everything's working out pretty good on this. Lining up pretty fair. I'd say a couple places there might be three or four threads off, but I can easily move that, especially with this really thin Madeira. And I'm going to use black size B uh, good broad thread from a long, long time ago. I'm going to try to um, show one of the things that happens occasionally when you're doing weaving uh, that I get asked about. Sometimes when you stack these threads and you're reaching for a thread that's underneath others you run the risk of twisting them. I'm going to show you how I um, like to do it and, and see if it works out for you that way to help to keep from twisting threads or getting them to cross over each other. <clears throat> right now I'm working on a seven layer weave and I've come into this problem a little bit. So I'm going to take thread number 14 out. The one that I need is this one that's slightly green. And I lift it up and I see that it's underneath this brown thread. So I hold the brown one towards the front or off to the left and I pull out the green one to the right. And that's how I can get the threads to stay straight. We'll, do, we'll put this one in and thread 15 should be the same. So I'll look for that greenish tint, pull it up. I see that it also is behind the brown or underneath the brown. So I will pull it up and towards the left and pull the green thread out towards the right. That keeps it from getting twisted and you see where I've taken it all the way to the end of the where it's going to cross over and it, all, it has that one brown thread in between it and the other green. I hope that helps. Sometimes uh, that's what we need to do to keep them from twisting. 